Here I have taken the colors I would like to work with. I only lay small blobs of paint around on my canvas that I can work into each other with my kitchen sponges. The colors can be mixed without turning brown, as they all consist of the same primary colors, blue and yellow. Now I just use my kitchen sponges to work the colors into each other in small circles. In the transition between the colors, I use a clean sponge to make the colors fade nicely into each other. When my first coat of paint is dry, I give it one more time to saturate the colors. That makes them more vibrant and intense. I dilute my paint a bit by spraying some water on my sponge. This will make the color more transparent and easier to apply in a thin layer. The color just needs to be slightly saturated, not opaque. Now I want to make some harlequin squares in my background. My harlequin squares should only be visible in the background when my painting is finished. For that you can use a stencil if you have one. Here I will show you how to make them by hand. Here I use an old floor list. You can use a ruler or whatever you have on hand, as long as the width of it is not more than 2 to 4 cm. You need to be able to draw on both sides, so that your harlequin squares will be the same size all the way through the area you are making the effect on. As you probably have wondered, you can see I have marked with tape in one of the sides, as I want to make an area where I can write Bovi. Some fun effects need to be made, and then the name needs to be painted. I use a nice clear red color, which contrasts with the other colors. As you can see, the color is not opaque, and therefore I mix a little white in. Otherwise the color would not be vibrant, but more matte. 
Later on in the process, I will give it the second coat of the red color. Now I want to start getting my Harlequin checkers rustic and get them more into the background by layering some color over them. For this I use my sponge. Along the way I scratch a little bit in the paint as well as wipe some of it off again with a damp cloth. Finally I take a metal spatula where I use only the back to apply some paint in a slightly thicker layer. No need to scrape it on, it should be applied with the entire underside of the spatula. Finally I just dub it a little bit with my sponge to get some slightly softer transitions. So, now I want to color the other side of the canvas. Right now it does not look particularly good, but it's getting better. It's about at the present time having confidence in the process. Again, I use both my sponge and my metal spatula to apply the paint. If you find that your paint is a little heavy to pull out, you can just put a little water on the sponge. As you can see, I ended up applying yellow and white paint on the blue color as I did not like the result. Hooray for white, that's my motto. Because when you make something that did not turn out as expected, you can fortunately always paint it over again. You should not be afraid of that. Do not be afraid to experiment. Maybe it'll be good, maybe not, but if not, hooray for white. Now you can hardly see my Harlequin cubes anymore. You can adjust on it by applying more or less paint on top. Here is the plan that you could only just sense them in the background. They should not be dominant. There's an art expression called kill your darlings. It can be very difficult for some people. Now I'm painting with the red for the second time. See how nice and clear the color is now compared to when I painted it on without the white coloring. It would never become the red beautiful color even if you gave it many layers. The white serve as a pure background for your color. Now I make some effects with a stencil with polka dots. I do a little here and a little there and it can also be used as possibly camouflage for ugly transitions if there are some areas you are not happy with. Now I'm projected my portrait of David Bowie. Now I want to draw the outline of David onto my canvas. I do this with a black Posca pen. I'm always very detailed when I draw the eyes, the nose and the mouth as it is his personality that is to be expressed here. You cannot start freestyling when drawing details from a face. You can do this when you draw the hair, the clothes and the body, but never when you draw the face of the personality because then you will not be able to recognize the person. The computer is very smart in selecting the details. We're not smarter than that unfortunately.
Now I want to make some fun with his name. Therefore, I dab with a polka dot stencil in two different colors before writing his name. I have chosen to make the name by hand. If you do not feel comfortable with that, you can use stencils or reuse your projector with the text you then project. Now I just make my polka dots all the way through and afterwards it gets a second layer of a different color. I just put the second color here and there. Then I draw his name with my Posca pen. Then I paint it black around the text instead of painting the text itself. That's just to make it stand out a little bit more. I think it looks super cool. Let me know in the comments below what you think. And here you see the final result. Let me know in the comments below what you think of the painting. And please, if you have any suggestions to people you think I should paint, please feel free to comment and I will look into it. See you in the next video. Bye!